and you're watching Political Exchange, where we unpack Africa's political economy. South Africa's youngest political party, Ahang, the new kid on the block, launched as a party over the weekend, unveiling its leadership and policy platform. As part of our look at the offerings of key role players in the South African general elections, which is scheduled for next year, I'm now joined by Dr. Mills Soko, who is head of policy for Ahang. Dr. Soko, thank you so much for joining us. You, of course, talking to us from our Cape Town studios. Um, very quickly, what is in politi so policy terms distinguishing a hung from all the parties that are in the field at the moment? Uh, thank you so much for having me. We uh, announced a, um, a hung uh, in February um, uh, this year, and we said then that uh, we will go around the country to speak to various South Africans, all the constituencies that matter, business, the religious community, working people, uh, rural people, and we have done that. And one of the things we wanted to establish uh, in our discussions and consultations with those people was to find out what they think should be the priority focus of our policies. And we also conducted an internal poll within Ahang. We showed very clearly that uh, there are five key issues that South Africans are concerned about. Uh, and those issues are the economy with a specific focus on job creation. The other issue is uh, the public service with a specific focus on corruption. Uh, the other issue is the health, education, as well as safety and security. So uh, we have unveiled uh, last Saturday uh, draft policy proposals which uh, focus on those five areas. And this will constitute the basis of our election manifesto that will be launched uh, in November this year. Essentially, when you look at the proposals, some of the uh, proposals we, we, we make are original proposals, but there are also other proposals that uh, you might have heard about in the past, but which the current political parties have not implemented effectively. So our policy offering is not so much about uh, reinventing the wheel. It's about identifying gaps in the current policies, but also coming up with new proposals uh, that we think the current policy uh, packages uh, you know, do not cater for. Now, Dr. Mills, you've gone to, or rather Dr. Soko, you've gone to, through what South Africans regard as a priority, and we know that uh, there's very little difference. What I asked you is to distinguish Ahang's policy offering from, let's say, the ruling African National Congress, the largest um, opposition party, the official Democratic Alliance, the official opposition. What is it that Ahang is going to, let's say, let's take um, uh, safety. Uh, what is Ahang going to offer voters that they haven't been offered before, sir? Okay, um, I've got uh, the proposals here before me, and I can uh, say to you, uh, that uh, we have proposals that are very unique, that are very original, and this is what I'm going to go through here. One of the things that we want to do uh, is to demilitarize the police. Uh, the ANC uh, embarked upon a very aggressive process of militarizing the police. Uh, we saw this uh, uh, finding expression in Marikana uh, sometime in August last year when over 30 people were killed uh, on the basis of a shoot to kill instruction that was given by the, the, um, the ANC government. So what we're saying here is that we need to demilitarize the police. So what we'll do, we'll return the police to a police service and implement a zero tolerance policy for br uh, police brutality. And this is uh, informed by a, um, a strong recommendation that we received in our poll, in our research, and also in our uh, discussions with several uh, sectors in South Africa. The very big concern about uh, the rise in police brutality. And then we also want to, uh, uh, you know, to embark upon a, an intensive investment drive uh, to upscale equipment and resources at the, at the disposal of our police so that they have what they need to do their job. We also uh, recommend that we'll boost the size of the South African police uh, 250,000 members, 60,000 more than the current government targets. We also uh, propose that we'll create a national database to track, to track crime and manage cases. So these are some of the, the policy proposals that we, uh, we, uh, we're offering in terms of uh, safety and security.
Mm -hmm. Dr. Soko, it sounds really exciting and interesting. The key question is how? Um, because many of the proposals that you've outlined are part of existing government uh, 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 operations. But of course, we see that it's easier to say something than to implement it. How mm. are you going to, for example, um, demilitarize the police, given the fact that we have a police secretariat, which is a civilian oversight? Let's focus on the how. How is Akhan going to, to set about doing that? Uh, for example, you've spoken about having more police. Where's the money going to come from? Yes, uh, let me just say firstly, um, uh, Karima, that these are draft proposals. They represent a preliminary thinking on our part with regard to policy. Uh, we will have a process of consultations that will proceed beyond uh, the launch. We have a series of consultations that we want to do with experts, with the general public, and uh, we hope to finalize these policies by the end of September with a view to launching the, um, you know, the... Um, the manifesto in the, in the, so these are draft policy proposals. Uh, in terms of uh, spending, we have recognized that the Auditor General has uh, reported, you know, that in the 2011-2012 financial year, almost uh, 33 billion rands has been wasted uh, in, the, in the form of corruption, uh, also in the form of wasted and uh, wasted expenditure, as well as irregular expenditure. So we believe that we have uh, enough resources within the current resources that we have, you know, to redirect those resources towards addressing uh, these uh, deficiencies in our police service. So we will look at in the coming months. We look at, at costing issues. We have not done those issues yet uh, because it's a it's a it's an evolving policy process. Uh, we only started in February, so this is these are proposals. We'll do the costing, but we've identified, as I say, gaps where we could get. Uh, enough resources to address and fund, uh, you know, these proposals. And mm -hmm. one of those, as I said, has to do with, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the amount of money, high levels of money uh, that are being wasted by government uh, in the form of corruption, as well as uh, wasteful and irregular expenditure. And uh, according to the Auditor General, this amounts to 33 billion rands, which is mm -hmm. a lot of money. Dr. Soko, uh, the big issue, of course, is the, um, the black middle class. Many of the parties that we are talking yes. to um, believe that this group of people are going to be the deciding factor with many undecided voters. Both the African National Congress we spoke to, the Democratic Alliance, yes. all are making a play for this group. Um, but of course, um, in order to go and um, convince this group of people that you have their best interests at heart, you'd have to take into account the issues that are close to their hearts. One of the issues are, of course, yes. um, economic empowerment, particularly black economic empowerment. What is a hung's position, policy position, on black economic empowerment? Yeah, well, you know, our, one of the primary target constituencies that we're looking at is the youth, uh, particularly uh, black youth, but youth in general. And um, we have uh, at our disposal uh, figures which show that uh, the youth in South Africa today account for over half of the population of South Africa. So that is a very important uh, target constituency for us. And within that youth, you have, it's a multi-class grouping. You know, you have uh, working class youth. Uh, you also have a black, you know, middle class. Uh, and we have professionals, we have entrepreneurs. And uh, we have developed a, a set of policies uh, around that, one of which uh, has to do with providing uh, education opportunities uh, to this grouping. But we are also looking at uh, issues related to affirmative action, although we have not reached any settlement on that because we still have to consult with our members who came to the, uh, the launch on Saturday. We are looking at black economic empowerment, uh, looking at what the current gaps are in black economic empowerment are and what can be done to improve uh, opportunities for the black middle class in the economy. And some of these, what we classify as banning issues, we have not uh, really finalized decisions yet. You know, there are other issues like the, the NHI in health, the issues like uh, labor market inflexibility, uh, labor market policy, uh, the other issues. So we, we will make decisions on those. So I can't tell you at this stage what the final decision is because that still has to be ratified by our membership uh, we'll take those proposals, what we have in mind to them, and they will tell us what they think we should do.
Mm -hmm. But Soko, um, I just let me say that we are acutely mindful of the, the need to redress uh, you know, past in economic and social imbalances. And Dr. Uh, Mampela Rampele, who is our leader, made a very clear statement two weeks ago at uh, the Cape Town Press Club that Ahan stands for social justice and Ahan is cognizant of the need to redress past imbalances, recognizes that uh, we live today with a legacy of racial oppression and we will, as far as possible, do our best to address those concerns. So issues such as black economic empowerment, such as affirmative action, such as the land, uh, you know, land question, are issues at the top of our agenda, although we have not finalized discussion on those issues. I know you want me to tell you now what those issues are, but I can't tell you because we're still finalizing those issues. We'll only be able to do so uh, in September. We'll tell you once we've spoken to our members. Mm -hmm. Now, on the question of affirmative action, there has been quite a lot of debate around the appropriateness of that issue, yeah. whether 20 years in black people have been affirmed enough. Uh, we've heard the refrain coming, stop talking about the legacy of apartheid. But of course, the lived realities of people suggest something else, that we do um, sit with those legacies in very, very real terms. In short, Dr. Soko, what is your view on affirmative action? Are you in principle in support of affirmative action and uh, historical redress on the basis of race? I'm absolutely in support of affirmative action. I'm also absolutely in support of uh, economic measures to support those who were excluded from the mainstream of the economy in the past. So that is not in doubt. What is in question is how we do it and how we make it effective. And as we know uh, in this country uh, that uh, we've had these in policies in place uh, for since 1994, the question is whether they have been effective enough. The same can be said about BE and these are the issues that we are looking at is what can be done to ensure that these policies have the required impact. Uh, but the issue of redress, no doubt about it, we recognize it and we are going to come out very strongly on that uh, in the coming months and we will be happy to share your, our thoughts with you once we finalize our positions on that.